Let's see if I could get this straight. So on the left you have King George the Fifth from the Great British Empire, right? Uh, in the middle you have Tsar Nicholas the Second of Russia. Tsar in Russian means Caesar, right? And on the right you have Kaiser Wilhelm the Fifth of Germany. In German, Kaiser just means Caesar. So you have the British Empire on the left. Brits are, so they say, right? The English language is a Germanic language. So it's essentially the same people. We're talking about ruling classes now, right? Whomever they've conquered, right? Uh, those people's family trees, genealogies, are probably very, very different, right? By and large, anyway. Even though there may be some similarities and some relationship to their king, oftentimes there isn't any. So that's the king on the left, George. Uh, and then in the middle you have... Um, you could say, insofar as the legacies are concerned, right, not necessarily same exact political structure, but uh, the hair of the Eastern Roman Empire, right, maybe only in ideology, a Byzantium, right, that's why he calls himself Caesar. And then on the right, you have the Holy Roman Empire, Caesar, Kaiser, right, the Second Reich. <laughs> mm. Third Reich, now we got the Fourth Industrial Revolution, funny how these things tend to go from A to Z. Anyway, these three guys here are all first cousins who allegedly went to war against one another, obviously I'm oversimplifying the conflict went to war against one another, which today is known as World War I, because some Austro-Hungarian Habsburg, was he, descended from the Habsburgs, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, who was really like the third guy in line, but because one of his older brothers uh, committed suicide, and the second guy said, no thanks, I don't want to be king i guess and so it, even though he was terminally ill this is the F franz ferdinand archduke franz ferdinand right he got assassinated by some serb in sarajevo and because of that the whole thing spiraled into world war three right between these three first cousins now if they were so mad about one of their homies right i guess getting killed why not just find the guilty party and hang them, right? Why do tens of, was it hundreds of millions, tens of millions of people have to die? Why, why do why do all these people have to die, right? Can, can't you guys, like, figure this shit out amongst yourselves? And why why aren't you all, why aren't you fighting each other? I mean, there, this is the greatest conflict the modern world has ever seen. You're all engaged in it. And not a... Uh, not a drop of blood from any of you? What? I thought you was fighting the war. But, you know, of course they're not, because it's all family. Now imagine, imagine today if Biden, Putin, and Zelensky were all first cousins, right? Nobody would take the war seriously, right? So, I guess these guys here had to, you know... Fake a bunch of assassinations, maybe um, have some of their, um, you know, lower rank, like the third in line guy from a family that really wasn't all that connected, perhaps, and was going to be the sacrificial lamb. Maybe had some of those people eliminated, right, because they were a little bit too inbred and too distantly related. And, you know, ultimately, it's all about one ring to rule them all, so... You know, they they thinned the herd, maybe, right? Called some of the 
ballast and kind of stepped into the shadows and let, you know, puppets uh, take care of the dirty deeds on the ground as mass media was, you know, being developed, growing in reach and expands. I guess that's one and the same. And people were more informed about the goings on, right? Like how many people, like the peasants or the soldiers that went to war in First World War, how many of them actually knew that these three guys were cousins, right? First cousins. I mean, shit, the first two look like twins. <laughs> Is it all the inbreeding or were they really? Who knows, right? Doesn't matter. It's all one big family. Right? So these people probably retreated into the background a little bit. Some of them got off, you know, because they were in the way. Uh, some of them just maybe gave up some of their power because as the merchant class, uh, you know, started printing money. They made, they they naturally got a ton of control too. So so these some of these people had to take you know, give up some of their power, take a step back. But you know eventually they were re replaced by, in some cases, oligarchs or, or certain organized groups. Uh, they were probably also assimilated into some of these groups, societies. I mean, all three of these guys were. Um, the cross of Malta, right? Which some people say is related to Freemasonry. People say it's not Freemasonry, but it's it's akin to something like Freemasonry, right? A secret society. Then they also have that eight-pointed star, all of them. It's a slightly maybe different thing in the middle, right? But ultimately, they are united by something unites them and yet there's something different about them right so these two caesars on the right and and the king of it all maybe right the the guy who never gets his hands really dirty just has everybody else do their bidding right there's never really any war on his territory but it's these these other family members that rule over well, historically slavic territories right uh it's it's those people that get right that get eliminated by and large more so than anybody else right not to say that none of the anglos or, or germans who are really just germanized slavs by and large a lot of them anyway um, not to say that those the rank and file from all different types of nations aren't getting sacrificed but it's primarily the Slavic people that are getting sacrificed whenever these uh, Germanic, let's just call them what they are, r well, that's what you call them today. They probably have a different name for themselves. I would say Semites. And by that, I don't mean Jews. I just mean the descendants of Shem, right? Because you have Japhetite Jews, like the <laughs> Ashkenazi, right? But, uh, yeah. Going a little bit too deep down the rabbit hole. Anyway, the guy in the middle, right? Tsar Nicholas II um, is descended, at least in part, from the Varingians, right? The Rurikids or the Vikings, broadly speaking. So what you would today consider... And I'm again, I'm talking about the ruling classes because wh whomever they may have conquered and impose their will on, aren't necessarily, right? In large part, they are, right? Because they need rank and file to help them conquer. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they have the same genetics, right? Even if they were assimilated into that culture. Anyway, um, those were Semites. Or the descendants of um, Sem or Shem. Because ultimately, all of us white people, we're all brothers and sisters. We all come from the same family, whether you want to call them Jews or Arabs or Europeans, right? Not to say that, again, there hasn't been intermixing going on and, and other uh, races mixed into these. Like, you know, in Russia, there's the Asian influence. In uh, North Africa, there's obviously the black African admixture. 
Yeah, this is going to be a long and convoluted video, especially if the dogs keep interrupting. Shut up! Anyway, where was I? Lost my... Oh, yeah, the Varingians, or more precisely, the Vikings. And if you're at all confused about what I'm talking about, calling these people Semitic, right? I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about bloodlines. Um... Well, go listen to like Old Norse language or how about Welsh, even today. Go listen to Old English, right? Go listen to um, Irish or like Proto-Irish, whatever that was, right? If you could find someone reconstructing the Celtic language, go listen to that, right? And then go listen to German. And then go listen to Hebrew or any of the Arabic languages. And what you hear is the, you know, those all of those guttural sounds, right? Versus, and yeah, I'm oversimplifying. Versus the Japhetites or the people that came out of the Caucasus over land, right? Uh, when they speak, is more like shh, shh, it's more flowy and softer, right? And if you follow, this is real simple. If you follow, go listen to the languages uh, spreading from the Caucasus up and into Europe over land versus the languages that spread from the Caucasus over sea to North Africa, obviously, and um, up into Germany and, and maybe around Europe over water into uh, the British Isles, right? Go listen to all of those languages before they... Uh, a lot of that sound is still preserved to this day, like, for example, uh, in Liverpool, right? The Scouse accent. Go listen to the Scouse accent and tell me that doesn't sound Semitic, right? And then there's... And then there's also the fact that, you know, those people, by and large, had runes, which we know came out of um just giving you proof okay if you have other proof present it please we know runes came from um the phoenician alphabet right phoenicians are hebrews or proto hebrews right they're semitic people they were very well known for um they were seafaring people right that's why they dominated the Mediterranean, North Africa, and then went up, you know, to the British Isles or Scandinavia, right? Those were the Vikings. Uh, those were seafaring people versus the descendants of Japhet, right? Or the people that walked over, you know, they, um, um, they domesticated the horse, right? They're the steppe people from Eurasia, I guess you could say. And they came over land and, you know, settled uh, those parts of the world. Those are the people that Slavs today draw direct descendants from, come from, right? That's, by and large, and again, I'm oversimplifying, that's the R1A haplogroup, and the Semitic one. Again, I'm not talking about Jews as you know them today, right? Because the Ashkenazi Jews, the Levites, are R1A, which makes perfect sense because they're the Khazars, right? They came over land and they converted to Judaism I'm talking about Semites different thing like I this has been confused for a reason in my opinion these these distinctions but the truth is in the Bible it's all in there right we're all descended from the same daddy basically and these three sons he had anyway you look at the structure of Hebrew I'm not talking about because it's easy to change the sound of the language, right? And the, and what words mean because those are superficial differences. And it's a lot more difficult to change the structure or, or the backbone or the skeleton of any language, right? So when you look at some of these Germanic, right, or broadly speaking Germanic languages... They have structural, they're very similar to Hebrew in structure, right? But because they had a common ancestor language. And this is, this is like an open secret amongst linguists. And it's, it's one of those things, it's like cholesterol, right? You're not supposed to uh, 
speak the truth about this, right? It's kind of kind of how it is. But it is what it is. And in no way, shape, or form am I saying that a certain type of people, even just talking about the elites who talk a certain way or have certain genealogy, that they're good or bad, right? And that, that the one side is good and the other side is bad, right? I am not making that value judgment at all. I'm just well, going deep down the rabbit hole and um, telling you what I believe and giving you evidence for why I believe the things I believe. So once again, going back to Kaiser, except his name, well, he calls him, called himself Tsar, Caesar, right? The one in the middle that's uh, ostensibly, I guess, Russian. He's descended from the Rurikids who were Vikings or what you would today call Germanic people who started Russia, right? Now, there was, again, some admixture in there. And I, I don't know their family trees that well, but he is indirectly, I think by maternal line, I'm not sure exactly, descended from the German, listen to me closely now, the Germanic people or Vikings that created what we today call the modern state of Russia, right? And then his family, the Romanovs, right? Rome, the people of Rome, yeah? You catch it, this is why... He called himself Caesar and was the Eastern Roman Empire, right? And to this, this legacy lives on today. I'm not saying that these families are necessarily involved. I think they are, at least to some degree. But legacies, ideologies, right? The, this thing continues. It's easy to see. And again, it's I'm a broad picture kind of a guy, so I'm not going to spend time researching all these secret societies and the exact family trees genealogies getting bogged down in all the fucking details that at the end of the day don't mean anything right big picture people we all got shit to do don't we so and then these romanovs that he is from who are in part descended from the germanic rurics uh inbred with the germanics of continental europe right so the Danish, German, um, I don't know if every single Romanov ruler, but a lot of them had married Germanics, basically, right? And like Catherine the Great, for example, like she was German. She was a Protestant German, but she was probably the most famous Tsarina of, of Russia, right? converted to Russian Orthodoxy for political reasons, obviously, right? Learned Russian, maybe. A lot of them didn't even speak Russian. <laughs> These people that, that ruled Russia for centuries now. A lot of them didn't even speak Russian. Imagine that. And I think they all spoke French, which, you know, should maybe tell you where they really come from, maybe. Right? The Franks. Like uh, Charlemagne. I believe he was a Frank, the guy that was the, well, he really was Orthodox Christian, right? Or he spread Orthodox Christianity by means of crusades uh, into well, Western, Central, and Eastern Europe, right? And then, you know, from that we got Roman Catholicism and Orthodoxy, State Orthodoxy, and blah, 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 right? But that guy who... You know, today they will call German or whatever, Germanic, spoke that language also. Well, he was a Frank, if I'm not mistaken, right? And he crusaded and um, murdered a ton of Japhetites and uh, Christianized them, right? That was the Holy Roman Emperor, right? So those legacies are, are still there. That was the Holy Roman Empire. And from the other side, the Japhetites got attacked by... Byzantium, right? The eastern wing of the Holy or the Roman Empire, right? Look, like, I'm not a historian or anything, but it's pretty clear to see to me. And these, and I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that these guys agree on everything all the time, right? There's, there's internal fighting, there's strife, there's, there's problems, and, and 
And yeah, they will they will send you to fight for them and never really endanger one another. You're they're basically chess players and they use people as their pawns, right? But at the end of the day, they meet, shake hands, and they say, fair play, brother, cousin, sister, right? Um, cousin, husband. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of inbreeding going on between these, these peeps. Anyway, so then the, the Romanovs, the, those people of Rome, right? The Roman Empire. Um, that's, that's, that's their legacy, not mine. They they married the Germans, right? What you will call Germans today. Franks, whatever they were, probably. That's probably who they were, Franks. So Russia, you could say, right? This is the point I'm trying to get at. For centuries now, not only was it started by a Germanic people, okay? It has been ruled by certain Germanic, by and large. I'm not saying there's never been any Slavic admixture, right? But these are Slavicized Franks, Germanic people, right? Vikings, um, Semites. These are Slavicized Semites. Who that? This is just my theory, right? That is insofar as the Semite thing, the German part, that that's indisputable. That's just history. Who have been ruling Russia forever, right? So when we find ourselves today in a situation where Putin is fighting supposedly by proxy, right, against NATO. Or the EU, which is really run by Germany, right? And Britain, of course, you know, because of Brexit, they're just sitting back and watching this shit play out. Because that's just what they do, right? Again, I'm not talking about the people, rank and file. I'm talking about the ruling classes. That's what they do. They just sit back and watch. In my opinion, let the the the, the minor minions... Uh, duke it out and then they come in and collect the spoils because you know they have the and and this is an oversimplification but you know they at least still to this day by and large control the money right that we all spend right well, why is the pound is it still why has it historically been the strongest currency right okay anyway So when today you have Putin, maybe, going up against, uh, that's at least the story, right? Going up against Putin, who spent m many of his formative years in in Germany, right? Speaks German fluently. That doesn't mean he is German, right? But we're talking about legacy here. Maybe he could be. I mean, was it his dad? That's purportedly Jewish, right? Which again well that's uh, essentially you know if if he spoke yiddish let's just say well then his daddy was german right anyway putin you know while he's supposedly waging war against the west is um you know the oil keeps flowing right right is he is he killing any Western people? Well, he's waging the war against the West. Is he killing any Westerners? Who is he killing? The Slavic people. Right. So, you know, this would never fly today. Again, if Zelensky, Putin, and Biden were cousins, right? First cousins, this shit would never fly. No one would buy this war. So because of how mass media has developed and what it... You know how it's it's become, especially with the advent of the internet, right? These these people really had to go into the shadows, and th this is my it's just my theory. Okay, this is going to be very controversial. This might upset some of you, but it's just my theory. Going back to Tsar Nicholas the Second, who was canonized by the Ortho Russian Orthodox Church, right? Or the a legacy, right? The legacy of that crusader who murdered. Um, a lot of uh, Japhetites. They carry on that legacy, obviously. At least to some degree. Um, after this, Tsar Nicholas II, you know, quelled a bunch of uprising at one point, what's called the Bloody Sunday, a peaceful protest, right, of Orthodox priests, led by an Orthodox priest nonetheless, right, quelled it by means of, you know, bullets and such. 
killing a whole bunch of people, murdering a bunch of people during various surprisings, right? Getting his people involved in one of the bloodiest, if not the bloodiest conflicts in the history of humanity, right? Simply because the Bolsheviks uh, allegedly took him out and his family in brutal fashion with their bodies never ever recovered right i mean why wouldn't you want to put his head on the stake and be like look at me i'm a big bad bolshevik i got this ma's head on the stake what you gonna do now right the dumb fuck bolsheviks which were basically funded by the west and eventually the useful idiots that they were got eliminated <laughs> because they had served their purpose um you know today when we have osama right killed and thrown into the ocean a lot of people call bullshit and they're like where's the body right so i'm skeptical i'm just gonna say that i'm skeptical that he was murdered maybe he just went into hiding and was pulling strings from behind the curtain right shadow government it was one of the people right gave up some of his power shared some of his power was allowed to you know retire unscathed maybe they never recovered any of the bodies, and their family's still alive and well, right? And they're very fucking rich. So, right, but after he was supposedly, or history says he was, brutally murdered by the Bolsheviks, despite the fact that, you know, he murdered, or at his behest had murdered, you know, Orthodox uh, father, at least one, and, you know, Russian Orthodox people peacefully protesting, was engaged in quelling, peasant rebellions and killing thousands and thousands of his people and then throwing them into into this world's bloodiest conflict ever where millions upon millions of people died, right? This guy was canonized and became a saint according to the, you know, Russian Orthodox Church. Go figure. And now people rever revere him, right? The guy that turned the guns on his own people. Now, now all these people revere him. Like he was some kind of a great person. Even though if you peacefully protested in front of his palace, that was, that was a bullet in your ass, right? He's a saint. This is... Why aren't we talking about this, people? How is this okay, right? How is this okay? Why, because Bolsheviks bad? Yeah, fuck yeah, they're bad. How does that make him good? Right? But, you know, if you're getting butt hurt, then you're probably brainwashed. And you don't give a fuck about humanity, ultimately. You can't. If you're getting butt hurt. Anyway, maybe he was indeed brutally murdered and because he had served this purpose and it was time to go, right? One ring to rule them all. Ultimately, that's what this is about. You can't have three Caesars. But there it was, right? Another Germanic person, if only in legacy, right? Sending all these Slavs into all these wars where Slavs are killing Slavs, right? That was the First World War. Fought mostly in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, right? That fucking whatever the fuck that was. Well, what that was was probably 80% Slavic, right? And that's where the war happened. So, you know, who died? Who got eliminated mostly? Well, the R1A haplogroup got eliminated, right? The people that came over into Europe on land, right? On horseback. The Huns, as, uh, what was that fucker's name? Churchill. That's what Churchill called them, right? The Huns. We got to go get the Huns because that's who those people were, right? The Slavs and so on and so forth. Proto-Slavs, the descendants of the people of the Eurasian steppe, right? The Atamans, the Hussars, right? Right, those people. Who, <laughs> in, in the Second World War, some of them went up against tanks on horseback. Crazy mobs that they were. So, then we had World War Two, right? Which was Germany and guess who else? Russia, right? Attacking Central Europe, right? A country where the R1A haplogroup, at least in so far as Europe is, is concerned, today is the most prominent 
who knows how many more of those genes were were in that look these people are eugenicists right we all know this these people will inbreed the fuck out of themselves in order to keep their bloodlines pure right these people give a fuck that's why i'm looking at this from i'm looking at the genetic component here and that's hard to ignore right that's important to them too i'm not saying that's the only reason but that's also very important to them so once again you had the descendants of the bolsheviks people um aligned with the bolsheviks who followed Karl Marx is right, a German or Germanic guy's ideology, right? Spread that into into Russia. Um, probably were at least to some degree from that people, right? Those people, or Stalin specifically, who carried on that legacy, right? Once again, teamed up with Germany. And attacked Central Europe. Whatever the political body is there, right? That they're attacking and waging war against. The people that are in that political, those political borders are of a certain genealogy that's different than, than them for the most part, right? So again, you had Germany and Russia, right? I'm talking about the elites now. Waging war in Central Europe, right? Central and Eastern Europe. And now today we have the beginnings of World War Three. if these fuckers, as predicted by Albert Pike and countless prophecies, whether it's Catholic or otherwise, or Orthodox, Christian, and I think there's also some Muslim, Abrahamic faith prophecies, right? It, it's funny to me how Christians will get mad, right? That the Jews call them goyim or cattle when their own book calls them sheep. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong, those of you that don't know me that well. I do believe in God. But organized religion got all of y'all confused. Just my opinion. But... Anyway, that being said, once again, we have, you know, big bad Russia with a German speaking um, Russian, I guess, at the helm. Going into war against the West, except not really killing any Westerners, right? Funny how that works. The hi history just keeps repeating itself, depending on the paradigm through which you analyze it, right? And if this conflict spreads, as the Ukrainian immigrants are spreading, it's going to be mostly confined to the same territory, right? A little bit of Russia, right? And and Poland and everything in between. And Eastern Germany, they're going to get it too. You know they will, right? Because well, those really are Germanized Slavs to a large degree anyway. So... This this whole war we have happening right before us doesn't make any fucking sense. And it, it just on so many levels it doesn't make any fucking sense. So a uh, delegation. I think it was the Polish prime minister. Yeah, who by the way uh made his bones as a child actor along with his twin brother who was in my opinion, and the opinion of many other people, assassinated, or maybe better yet, sacrificed, uh, just across the Polish border. Um, by, uh, some people will say Putin, but uh, Putin's not all powerful. It's likely that it was uh, the GRU that nobody talks about. Everyone knows the KGB, right? And don't talk about the FSB, fewer maybe but gru i don't hear any western analysts talking about the gru those fucking freemasons right it is what it is anyway so that guy right a child actor 
who imprinted himself on the minds of the Polish people by first and foremost being uh, an actor, right? Just like Zelensky, just like Trump, just like Reagan, just like... Well, maybe not Trudeau, but from what I hear, he was a drama teacher, right? All these essentially actors, right? People who were trained, professionally trained to act because they're minor players who have their part to play in this theater, right? Uh, Jesse Ventura, Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? This this model has been used all over the world to, to get certain people in power and then, you know, manipulate them. Uh, steer him a certain way and then get rid of him when need be. Zelensky, right, obviously an actor who, for those of you that don't know, uh, was um, had a TV series produced by some Kolo, Kolomoisky guy, I think that's his last name, some uh, Ukrainian Jewish oligarch, you know, became... Uh, a president on, on national TV, blah, 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 in this TV series with the promise of, you know, making Ukraine great again, so on and so forth. Um, and then got his political career sponsored by that same Kolomoisky, or whatever the fuck his name is. And lo and behold, became president, right? Because the Ukrainian people were brainwashed, I guess, and just fucking desperate for something different, maybe. Maybe someone who wasn't part of the, they didn't think was part of the, clique um yeah that guy and his entire cabinet are you know professionally trained actors tv producers so on and so forth right they're his i don't know about his entire cabinet but a lot of the people around him right especially those people you see in all those totally real uh, videos um broadcasting live from kiev uh those people are essentially from ukrainian hollywood right because again, the people that are really related and really important and don't want to shed each other's blood, they retreated to the background and some of them got eliminated too. But their legacies are very well, very much alive. And there's been another component added over the years, which is secret societies like Freemasonry, which they themselves are definitely part of as signified by, again, the Cross of Malta they all wear. And that other order with the eight-pointed star, even though whatever's in the middle might be slightly different, ultimately it unites them all, right? They all get together and discuss what's next, right? They're playing chess with the human pawns, hoping to be the king, the Caesar, right? So, whether it's Putin himself, who is really a modern version of a czar, that's in charge there's there's definitely people behind him right these secret societies that also influence and control him and if he steps too much out of line could probably snuff him out and maybe that is what happened to czar nicholas right he didn't want to go along with the plan and he got snuffed out right no one should have shed a tear but people are fucking <sighs> easy to brainwash and manipulate the guy is revered as a saint now right and if you talk about the, the millions of people that he had a hand in, in murdering, well, you know, I guess you're a heathen or you're somehow a bad person. Figure that one out. Make that make sense, right? Nothing against any religion, right? But is your religion truly true, is it? Really? They'll take, they'll take, well, they probably canonized the, the father that got murdered too, but, you know. I hope they did anyway, <laughs> to keep up appearances, if nothing else. Anyway, yeah, you know, once again, going back to what I was talking about, the Polish actor came to Kiev along with the Slovenian president, I think, and maybe someone, I forget exactly, it's not that important, but there was, it was a delegation of three different heads of state that are ostensibly anti-Putin and pro-West, right? They said, hey, Vlad, the impaler, Putin, we're coming over to Kiev, all right, to talk to our boy Zelensky, so 
uh, no shelling, all right? And then Putin said, cool, no problem. Let me know when you leave so that I could start shelling Kiev again, if he is indeed. And that's exactly what happened, right? Weird. Has that ever happened in, in the history of the world? I mean, probably. It just was never on the news because media, you know, wasn't there to report on it. But this, this, is, this is like unheard of. That these heads of state travel into the war zone, announce the fact that they're going to go into the war, war zone. They go in, the bombing stops, then they leave, the bombing resumes, right? So, so who, who are they going after, right? Obviously us. Not their own people, at least, you know, not for the time being. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying these are, like, very, very important people, but they're connected, and at least for the time being, they're useful. So they get to live, right? And lavishly at that, if nothing else. So, when, when I call Putin a globalist, I, I understand that that's not exactly correct in the way that we've defined globalism today, right? And well, what is globalism? Well, this basically economic interdependence between countries where states are no longer self-dependent, right? They can't produce all of their own food, all of their own electricity, and arm themselves well enough to be able to defend themselves to, to some degree, right? They're, not, they're no longer self-sustainable, independent, sovereign bodies, right? They're dependent on other political entities, countries, if you will, corporations, to be able to survive, right? We have this global economy that you you shut down one major player and everybody all over the world suffers, right? Including Russia. So how is he not a globalist? Well, in a sense, Russia is part of the global economy, so they are globalist. In another sense, I could see why people would say they're not that, because they are they seem to be pushing for a different kind of globalism, right? A globalism that where the Russian entity, whoever's in charge, is at the helm of, right? It is in charge of, again, at the very, very top level, these people are fighting against one another, trying to, you know, be that one ring that rules them all. So there's no doubt about it. But, you know, so whereas I stated that Russia isn't exactly dependent, it's still dependent on the global economy. Well, I mean... They're still very powerful and, and independent in many ways. They have a shit ton of energy. They have a very, very good, strong army. At least that's what they tell us. And they could produce all of their own food, right? And whatever else may be necessary to call a state sovereign and all of that, that other stuff. Except the problem with Russia is that it's not really a state. It's a federation of states, right? So what Russia had to do in order to become that which it is, so independent in some sense, it had to subjugate a whole bunch of people and steal their shit, right? How are, how are the people doing in some of these other republics? How much money are they making? What's their standard of living? Can they support themselves on their own? Right. So it, in a sense, it is a globalist entity. Or it's, it's the step necessary for globalism, right? It, it's the step in that direction. It just has a different Russian flavor to it. That's what I meant to say. So I just wanted to clarify that. But at the end of the day... All these people have the same goal in mind. This is the point of this entire video, which is globalism or one huge empire to rule the entire world, which is why they're agglomerating, is that the right word? And subjugating all these people around them and bringing them into the fold, right? And at the end of the day, when there's, I don't know, maybe just two of these entities left in the world, there'll be there's going to be the final boss battle. And well, that's the goal anyway, right? And then you have that one world government, right? So seeing Putin at the World Economic Forum, whether he agrees with everything to a T, uh, that, that they, or the model for this globalism, whether he agrees exactly with the model that they have, ultimately, at the end of the day, the reason why he is there is obviously because he's interested in the same things that they are interested, if not exactly uh, the exact same model by which it will be brought about, right? So at the end of the day, all these people have the same goal in mind, which is globalism. But at the end of the day, the end, the end, the end of the day, 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 they want to be the one who calls the shots what this globalism looks like and sits on the throne and tells everybody else what to do.
Is this simple enough for everybody to understand? I doubt this will dissuade anyone from falling in love with these people and worshipping them as if they were saints or some kind of macho man. <laughs> Sending a whole bunch of kids into war, right? Macho man, why? Because they uh, CGI, they photoshopped images of him riding a bear, bear-chested. That makes him a man? Go fuck yourself. Thanks for watching.